What's up, team? It is... I ain't gonna tell y'all what time it is. It's late. But anyway, I'm sharing this testimony by request. In 2012, telling you it seemed like it was the worst year of my life. In 2012, for like a period of, I think, a month or two, the early part of 2012, I, um, I couldn't get no sleep. It was torture. I was sleepy, but would only sleep about 15 minutes a night. I would get no more than that. And it was, it was torture, y'all. And at the time, I was between jobs, so I'm, I'm glad for that. Cause I didn't have to, I didn't have to be nowhere in the morning, but I would be sleepy and only get 15 minutes every night and my eyes would be heavy. And somebody suggested I take some, um, some sleeping pills and, and it didn't work for me. It did not work. My eyes would be so heavy. I would try to go to sleep. I wanted to go to sleep. But it just, they just wasn't helping me. It wasn't helping me at all. And this went on for about, I, I don't remember exactly this part, but this went on at least a month or two. Where I just wasn't getting no sleep. And then this also happened the early part of that year. I started getting pains in my stomach where food wouldn't stay down. And this started on May 4th, 2012. I was throwing up. Everything I ate, everything I ate would come back up. I was having extreme pains in my stomach. I would, I, I was at the point where I was, uh, I was scared to eat anything, and um, cause just everything, everything was coming back up. And so, went to the hospital, stayed a few days, and they told me that they couldn't figure out what was going on with me. So they shipped me to another hospital. And I stayed there a few days. And they couldn't figure out what was going on. Matter of fact, the first hospital said one thing, and the second hospital said another thing, but nobody could figure out what was going on with me. From May 2012 to December 2012, I was literally in the hospital every single week. I would go to the hospital, stay, what, two days, two, three days, then they'd let me out. I'd go home, and I'd be home no more than a day or two before the pain start back. Then I'd be back in the hospital all over again. I was in the hospital so much, I knew the nurses on the sixth floor, the seventh floor, and the eighth floor. And when they see me, they say, first thing they say, when they see me being rolled in, Mr. No, Mr. Moses, you back again? Because <laughs> I was I was there so much. And I'm telling y'all, this is this excruciating pain. I wouldn't wish this pain on nobody. This pain was so strong, I wanted to die. I lost all faith. I wanted to die. I mean, I'll be crying so bad. I'll be crying so bad. And one time I had to go to the, um, the hospital in Charleston, and that was a three hour ride. I was in horrific pain for three hours. I was doing all kind of movement. When, whenever I rode to the hospital with somebody, I couldn't, I couldn't sit in the uh, passenger seat because it's too closed in. I had to be in the back seat where I could move and squirm and, and cry and, and throw up in something. And so that's how I always went. That's how I always went to the hospital. And it'll be excruciating pain. 
And then when I'd be in the hospital, when I'm at, when I was in pain, if they I didn't have the pain medicine yet, I would have to pace back and forth. This is the only way I could get any type of relief. It wasn't really relief. But this is the only way in my mind I could get any type of relief was to pace back and forth. Pace back and forth. So a couple of times people came to the hospital and they would just pace back and forth with me. I just walk back and forth, walk back and forth. The nurses, they didn't even want me to be standing up and walking back and forth, but I would just walk back and forth. I'm telling y'all, this this pain was excruciating. And I told you, I lost all faith. I didn't have any hope. I literally wanted to die. Now, let me tell y'all, in this time, May 2012 to December 2012, like I told y'all, literally, no, no exaggeration, I was in the hospital every single week. Every single week. And I was offered by somebody, I was offered some, some roots, witchcraft, to get better. Now, even though my faith was gone, I wanted to die. I just couldn't do that to God. I told the person, don't ever in your life ask me, do I want that again? And at that time, I lost a lot of weight. I was, I think I was around 230. I dropped all the way to 150 because nothing would stay up. I'm telling you, it was so bad. It was so bad that I used to be scared to go home because I know it's going to start all over again. I used to be scared when they tell me I'm leaving the hospital. Most people, when you leave in the hospital, you get happy. I would get sad because I'm like, oh, man, because I knew I was coming right back. I knew that pain was going to start right back again. And I remember um, one time my sister called one of the elders from the church. And when he came... I was in the kitchen. I was just crying, y'all. I was in so much pain. I was just crying. Because my sister trying to convince me not to go to the hospital, have faith, believe God. So I'm in there just crying and crying. I'm in excruciating pain. And he came in the kitchen and he prayed for me. And he laid hands on my stomach. And the pain left. Now, let me tell you, this pain didn't just leave like that. Don't ever just leave on its own. I had to have pain medicine or prayer. The pain, this whole thing was demonic. The pain left. He sat down, we talked for a while. I'm telling you, soon as I, soon as he got, he left. He probably wasn't even off the porch good. And I closed the door after saying bye to him. Came right back. The pain came right back again. Yeah. The pain came right back again. And I'm telling this because somebody wrote in the comments they wanted to know my experience. But, um, and it, the pain was always on the left side. And, you know, I later told him the story after months and months, I later told him this story. I never told him that the pain came right back. So you should have called me right back. Yeah, but then whenever you got ready to leave again, the pain was going to come right back. This whole thing was demonic. So anyway, I'd be in and out of the hospital every single week. And they would run tests on me. Couldn't find nothing. I took so many X x-rays and stuff. I can't even tell you. But anyway... One time they took me down to um they took me down to some room. They used to give me them nasty shakes where they could run some type of tests on me. And uh I don't know why they call them shakes. They don't taste not nowhere near good as a shake. But anyway, I remember one time they took me down to this waiting area where there's a bunch of people in beds. A bunch of beds in the waiting area. And there was this woman down there. I guess she was waiting on somebody. I don't know. I always felt like this woman was an angel because, let me tell you something, I know a lot of Christians. I know a lot of people of God. This woman was the most encouraging woman I ever seen in my life. 
This woman was about 75 years old. She would encourage everybody, everybody that walked by. She encouraged everybody that was in that waiting area in their beds. There's a black, old black, 75 year old black woman. I heard her say her age. She was talking to some guy. She's a 75 year old black woman just sitting there. She, you could tell she wasn't a patient. She encouraged everybody in the beds. And then she got to me, encouraged me. She encouraged doctors that walked by. This woman was the most encouraging person I've ever seen in my life. I'm telling you. I mean, the love of God was just gushing, gushing out of her. Let me tell you, after talking to her, I was encouraged. I've never been around a lot of saints. I've been around a lot of saints. And, and, and even in my walk, the love of God has not been displayed like it should. But this woman, this woman was so encouraging. This woman was so encouraging. I'm telling you, it, it, it was, it was awesome. It was awesome. So every day, every day in the hospital, they would just, they would give me, um, Dilaudid. Dilaudid. They would give me Dilaudid. And I'm not going to lie to you. At some point, I did get hooked on Dilaudid. But, when they want to hook me to a machine with the lot in it so I could give it to myself, I didn't like that. I, I was like, no, I, this is too much right here. And I had the machine and I had some medicine that was like weed between, between the medicine that was like weed because I wasn't eating. So they gave me something that was like weed. Some type of legal weed. It was just like, I'm telling you, this thing made you hungry. For real. This thing made you so hungry. I'm serious. I could have ate a whole platter. You know when you go to Subway, they got them platters, them big platters. Thirty-something dollars. I could have ate a whole entire platter by myself. That's how hungry it made you. So between that, with the munchies, and then the delighted, I was high as a kite. I kid you not. I was high as a kite. I didn't want that machine. But anyway, but I didn't get um I didn't get pain pain medicine every single time I went because there was a, a doctor there from Israel and whenever I would get her. Now at this time she felt like I was hooked on it. I wasn't even hooked on it at the time she felt I was hooked on Delada. So she would give me like Tylenol. I had I'm I'm having serious excruciating pain. And you gonna give me some Tylenol? But anyway. Different people would come by the hospital and stay a little while and pray. And um, remember one night my sister walked back and forth, paced back and forth in the room with me. I would just be, oh man, my family could tell you. Matter of fact, I'm gonna record it. I'm gonna record it one day and let my sister tell you from her point of view and get also get my mother to tell you from her point of view. But it was just. It was rough, y'all. It was rough. I was in horrible pain every single day, and nobody could tell me why. I remember one time I was getting ready to leave the hospital, and I was begging a doctor. I was like, is there anything you could do? Is there anything? Because I know once I go home, I might be there one day. And that pain was coming right back. But what they told me I had was... Um, gastroparesis and that's where your stomach empty out slow so i knew that was no more buffets right there because i remember one time i ate i ate breakfast then i ate lunch and i ate dinner and all that was sitting right there in my stomach. I could feel it all just sitting right there in my stomach not moving your stomach empty out real slow so that's what they told me I had gastroparesis and I was gone from church. Yeah, just about all that year. All that year. So when I came back to church in I think December, um, everybody came to where I was and greeted me. I was 
I done shriveled up. I done shrunk up. Yeah, I done lost a lot of weight, y'all. I lost a lot of weight. And the gastroparesis, I told, I asked the doctor, I said, will I have this for the rest of my life? He said, yeah. And let me tell you, y'all, the Lord healed me. The doctor told me that I would have gastroparesis for the rest of my life. The Lord healed me. And I wouldn't wish that on anybody. I'm telling you, excruciating pain. excruciating pain but anyway I just wanted to share that and, um, because somebody somebody wanted me to share that testimony of the gastroparesis so yeah I went through that from May 2012 to December 2012 and I was in the hospital every single week every single week I mean they they knew me, I'm telling you. And not just one hospital. I had a main hospital I went to. But let me see. Uh, I went back and forth to Marlboro Park Hospital, Carolina Hospital, um, McLeod Hospital, the hospital in Charleston. I went to another hospital that somebody recommended, five. I, I may, I may be not, I might not be getting them all, but um, I've been to a lot of hospitals, y'all. I've been to a lot of hospitals over this, over this thing. I'm telling you, that was, that was a bad year. That was a bad year. But anyway, the Lord healed me. The doctor told me I have for the rest of my life. The devil was a liar. Anyway, and I want you to be encouraged. Whatever you dealing with, the Lord can heal you from that too. Deuces.